ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the program, Chaos and Transformation. For this webinar, attendees will be in a listen-only mode. If you need technical assistance, please submit your request under the Tech tab in the window in the top right-hand corner of your computer screen. If you wish to submit a question during the presentation, please use the Q&A window, also in the top right-hand corner of your computer screen. Presenters will do their best to answer your questions. However, due to time constraints, not all questions may be addressed during this webinar. The presentation will now be turned over to Nazi Eftakari. Welcome. Hello and good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Nazi Eftakari, founder and CEO of Healthy Z. It is my pleasure today to host this very important webinar on chaos and transformation. The chaos, I think you all understand, characterizes the last year and a half almost now of what we have been through as Americans and as business owners and operators. And the most stellar example of a company that has endured and prospered during this time is our client of 20 years lifetime fitness uh, lifetime started with us 20 years ago with a mere 600 employees and they are now at something around 48,000 employees and it has been our pleasure and honor to serve them throughout these years i would like to start by telling you a short little story in february of fe february 14th 2020 i signed a letter of intent to welcome Abri from Boston as an investor in our company. Shortly thereafter, I met with the CEO of Lifetime, Baram Akradi, and told him about this new adventure that we were embarking on, and he committed his continued support to our company as we embarked in this new opportunity. Well, a few short weeks later, or a few short days later, Lifetime was forced into closing all clubs around the nation and laying off approximately 48,000 employees. It's important for you to know that throughout this period, throughout the last year <clears throat> and some, they continued to cover as many employees as they could on their health plan, the employees and their families, and it has been our pleasure and honor to continue to serve those employees. Throughout this year of tumult, uh, what Barham told me was the first companies who figure out how to transform their business model will be the companies that will endure and succeed in the years and months to come. Today, we're going to talk about a transformation Lifetime went through, their new fitness app platform, which is the most robust, the most impressive app I have seen in a very long time. And it should be the basis for an employee wellness program and well-being program that can be deployed for a mere $15 per employee around the nation, wherever you may be, whether in rural areas or urban areas, which can then be supplemented with use of lifetimes physical facilities. I cannot tell you how excited I am about Lifetime's new ventures and new activities in this area, and I hope you will find it as informative and exciting as I have. And today we have with us four of Lifetime's leaders in their digital field and in their corporation, and <clears throat> I hope that you will continue to follow them after today's webinar to see their impressive messaging um, on their digital platforms, uh, both in social and, and other uh, and well-being areas. And without further ado, I would like to first invite you to watch a brief video and then introduce you to Jeff Zwiefel, the <clears throat> Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. And before doing that, I want to send out a very special thanks to the CEO and founder of Lifetime, Baro Macrody, to Eric Buss, and to the incomparable Lisa Pollack, who's on the phone with me virtually every day advocating for the well-being of the Lifetime team members. 
So with that, let's watch the video and welcome Jeff. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about. From the beginning. Hit it, boys. So good morning. Um, I, uh, my name is Jeff Zwiefel. As Nazi said, um, it's wonderful to be here with you all this morning. I serve in the capacity of the Chief Operating Officer and Executive Vice President of Lifetime, and I've been with the organization for the past 22 years. I want to uh, also introduce my esteemed uh, colleagues uh, here this morning, RJ Singh, our Executive Vice President and Chief Digital and Information Officer for the company. I want to introduce Brian Everson as well. He's a Senior Vice President for New Business Development with Lifetime, and Keith DeRoof, our Vice President of Digital Marketing that will be joining us today. And uh, with that, you know, I think it's really important, as Nazi said, for us to start off with, you know, March of 2020 uh, absolutely rocked our world like so many people. And, you know, when you talk about the title of this webinar, Chaos and Transformation, we certainly have endured our share of chaos and transformation over the last year or so. And it, it is exciting time for our company because not only, as you'll hear from, you know, the presenters, we've been able to um, survive, but we believe we've been able to position ourselves and reposition ourselves to thrive. When you think about lifetime, um, you know, it's just so much more than a gym. It's truly a healthy way of life company that's dedicated to creating happier, healthier lives. And you know, we have this commitment of healthy people and a healthy planet. You really think about all that we do in this uh, really multi-level uh, ecosystem in terms of the way that we extend our company and our brand beyond just being a healthy way of life destination for fitness and healthy uh, living. We really have now extended uh, our verticals into uh, shared workspace, living with our apartment complexes, and also our stay in, in extended kind of opportunities within our living residence. We have uh, the iconic events where people can compete in, in uh, triathlons and mountain biking races all over, the, all over the country. And you can see the broad array of services and programs that are all offered within the lifetime umbrella of services. And I do believe, that, along with my uh, partners here, that this is one of the key reasons that not only have we been so successful in building this coveted healthy way of life brand over the last 25 to 30 years, but also being so successful during one of the most difficult times in the history of the organization, if not certainly the most difficult. One of the things that have served the company so well for 25 years is the fact that we've anchored on our true north, um, our commitment as an organization to serving our customers and the community as an entertaining, educational, friendly, inviting experiences of uncompromising quality that really provide this healthy, happy life. And this is something that not only we stay true to, but we also uh, make sure that all of our team members are committed to this sort of cause as well. And the way that we do this is through the best places, the best 
performers and best programs. And what you'll hear today from the guest speakers here on this webinar of how we've extended this, these experiences into other platforms and our digital products as well. When we talk about our best people, you know, that's probably the part that we're most proud of. Nazi mentioned it in her opening remarks. You know, we were 40 some thousand team members strong pre-COVID and um, amazing, passionate, talented, committed folks. And they love what we do at Lifetime and how we do it. You know, we're able to bring to life so many amazing experiences through our amazing people. And they're the ones that make our brand uh, really resonate in the community and are the, are the change makers. When you think about our 6,000 highly educated, certified fitness professionals and studio performers, our 450 plus nutrition coaches as registered dietitians in our facilities, these are the folks that are really able to impact people's lives and uh, make sure that they live a healthier way of life. The second vertical really as we commit to is the best places and bar none, our elegant, beautiful facilities are the best in class. Um, we were just fortunate able to open up one of our newest facilities in Oak Brook, Illinois here, a suburb of Chicago, a 200,000 square foot, three story uh, club. That actually is our 155th uh, destination in the lifetime locations. Those are, that was about a $70 million facility with a rooftop pool and all these beautiful and amazing amenities uh, from elegant life spas to life cafes to these unbelievable indoor and outdoor uh, uh, luxury resort and water parks um, that serve our families but they also serve all walks of life um, to the young and to the old. And so this is listing 148 iconic locations across 28 states and one Providence in Canada. Um, we've got 76 new locations in our new, new product development pipeline in our real estate division. So that just speaks to the aggressive growth that the company is still embarking upon. We have 1.7 million members, 1.9 billion uh, revenue and revenue that we had in 2019. And obviously we serve a very affluent member with an average income of $120,000 plus with a great uh, demographic and psychographic with 70% of them as iOS uh, users within our format. The third vertical really goes into our programs and our programs are these coveted best in class programs that we're working on continue to build and, and attract our customers and retain our customers. These programs range from our alpha program to our amp and edge cycling programs to our ringside uh, group fitness programs and our flow programs to give you some examples. And again, these are intended to meet the very needs of all of our customer demographics and psychographics and make sure that it's a place for everyone. And we're excited about uh, what we're able to deliver there. And within these programs, within our clubs, we have a 92 million annual visits in our club, um, 250,000 visits a day, 19 million participants in our studio classes uh, per year. So a tremendous story that we're able to offer and continue to offer. But as we all know, we have gone through a tremendous chaotic and a difficult time over the last year. And it's forced our organization to really address so many different opportunities. And, and it's so true that the pandemic has brought upon lifetime as it has so many other companies, the opportunity for us to reinvent ourselves and re-engage in so many different ways that either would have taken our organization so long to bring to the forefront or may have never been developed at all because we had such smooth sailing as an organization. And as a result, you know, we've aggressively uh, stood up our scheduling and reservation systems within our club that RJ and Keith 
we'll talk a, lot, a little bit about for our group fitness and cycle and yoga participants, which about 20 to 30 percent of our members all participate in. We, we aggressively put together on-demand video libraries and live streaming programs. And so many of these things were so tremendously appreciated by our customers as we had to shut down our clubs for multiple months uh, and for an extended period of time in many markets like Minnesota, multiple times that we had to shut our clubs down given the COVID um, issues in the COVID um, uh, breakouts and the government restrictions that we encountered. So we've been very excited about what's been uh, brought to the forefront. And I think, you know, the, also the very valuable things that we went through, as Nazi mentioned, is our commitment was twofold as we entered into the pandemic. One, of course, is we had to take care of our team members and the communication and the care that we wanted to make sure that we created with our team members was always at the forefront. And that entailed making sure that we always were transparent and forthright with exactly what was happening as we had to put many of our team members on furlough, but we, we committed to them also to maintain their full health and medical benefits during most of the shutdown. The second thing was obviously to preserve cash flow, and it required us to be extremely nimble and creative in that process. We went as an organization from bringing in about 40 or 50 million of EBITDA, uh, earnings before interest, uh, depreciation taxes and amortization, to going to zero and losing about the same overnight. Um, and so that required us as an organization to be extremely careful. Brian will go into a minute about all the different maneuvers that we had to go through in our COVID protocols. But I think the other thing as leaders and as an organization that we learned very quickly because as well, we're in the backyard here and we had a, 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 a very significant event, historic event yesterday, obviously with the, the judgment of the, the killing of, of George Floyd was how we as an organization stood in the front and took a very aggressive stance against social injustice and social inequities across the United States. One of the trips that I made right after the George Floyd uh, killing here in Minnesota was to our Atlanta market. And we as an executive team embarked on listening sessions with our team members in the clubs. And I have to say that was one of the most um, undeniably um, impactful events that I had ever went through in my entire 35 plus career. And um, when I had to hear stories of our team members being concerned about taking a certain uh, entrance freeway into our clubs and whether that they would be stopped or not by the police on that on that route and the the communication that they had to make to with their parents to make sure that they let them know that they arrived at the club safely and that they got back home safely those were extremely impactful for me and others executives and and allowed us to start our uh, diversity equity inclusion committee at that time and we put all of our executive teams through uh, the Ross Business School of University of Michigan diversity, equity, inclusion training. And it's been a phenomenal process that the, now we're rolling out to all of our team members within Lifetime. And so I can't uh, express enough how, how impactful that's been. I want to turn over to Brian Everson, our Senior Vice President of Business Development, to talk about the moves that we've taken within Lifetime uh, as uh, the chaotic and transformative events to engage and make sure that we were set up for success within the COVID environment. Brian? Great, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, as, as Jeff mentioned, you know, obviously this was a chaotic time and we all know that it was a chaotic time. And, and early on, 
in the pandemic, we really had little to no information to guide our decisions, leaving it really up to the businesses on how to handle these delicate situations. Um, as many of you probably know, a lifetime, our clubs were really never meant to be shut down, uh, nor were our businesses at that time, um, and for extended, extended periods of time, especially. The shutdown process led to a, a really tightly, having to have a really tightly coordinated partnership to ensure that every facet of our business was handled properly. From team members to members, facilities, vendors, and landlords, we covered it all. As Jeff mentioned just a second ago, we took great pride in how we handled our members. We took advantage of uh, an on-hold opportunity to put their memberships on hold, but allowing them to retain the membership so we could continually engage with them and communicate as well as provide them with access to our on-demand workout videos to stay active at home while they were away. And Keith, will we'll talk to that in a little bit. We were also especially proud of how we handled our team members. Jeff mentioned that, you know, we clearly handled them with care. Um, we placed them on furlough, many of them on furlough. Uh, we continued to cover their benefits, but also staying close to them with frequent communication and updates and check-ins to make sure they were okay. Our field leaders were retained, our area directors, general managers, even facility engineers, to help us monitor the clubs, but also assist in this preparation for reopening and transformation. Some of our studio performers were retained to help us with video production of our on-demand videos, which again, you'll hear more uh, about shortly. But all of those combined really helped build our brand and solidify our brand and build upon our reputation of always doing the right thing for our members and our team members, and even our, our partners, vendor partners. A handful of cor uh, our corporate team were essentially retained to start thinking through reopening strategies. This is you know, a first of our kind, as we all know. And we really went, when we went to the pandemic playbook shelf, there was no playbook. And so we had to start from ground zero. And we knew that with the inconsistency in how the states were shut down, and how each of the states were handling their situations, we were fearful of how uh, they would reopen. And we knew that we needed a standardization to handle all 150 locations. So that led us to developing a playbook to serve as a consistent communication tool for field leadership to utilize under the restriction level that's been deemed or assigned or, uh, by the, uh, the state, county, or even city mandated restrictions that were put into place. Observing uh, the initial guidance from the CDC really lent us to anticipating how we would think that the states or counties would reopen our locations. So we formulated really a high, moderate, low scenario for every facet of the business and how we would re reopen under each scenario. I mean, we're talking about everything from saunas, studios, fitness floors, to even hair dryers. We thought of every detail, resulting in a highly tuned SOP for every business to work through as they reopen, covering everything from spacing, cleaning, member flow, you name it. In addition, we found uh, focused on our cleaning protocols and disinfectants uh, materials that we'd use in the clubs. We recognize that we take great pride in how clean our clubs are. And for this situation, we clearly went over the top, utilizing top epidemiologists and vendor partners like the Ecolab our facility operations team developed a robust cleaning protocol for every inch of the building. Utilizing well-researched disinfectants, we now call our enhanced cleaning protocol. The blend of our SOP and then the enhanced cleaning protocol made up of, of roughly a 400 plus page COVID pandemic playbook, which we utilized to reopen every one of our locations efficiently and effectively. We even worked with a state uh, with the, the states and counties and even city level officials to help us in that process. Inclusive of the state of Minnesota's COVID response team, which was led by uh, Commissioner Tarek Tomes, to demonstrate our ability to reopen safely. And we were honored when they acknowledged our playbook and SOP to be used by the state to set standards for how they were going to open all the other gyms and health clubs in the market. So we continuously work with our government officials. Um, you know, that process has not been easy by any stretch. Um, and we continue to do this effort while attempting to lift restri as, as, uh, li restrictions lift across the country. So um, I'll turn it back to you, Jeff. 
Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. And as you, as everyone can appreciate, um, it's, as Brian mentioned, a very difficult time, um, but a time when, you know, organizations, great organizations figure out how to rise up. I mean, when we shut down in March of 2020, remember, we literally thought that it would be a couple months uh, of a potential shutdown. And, um, you know, fortunately, we were an organization that did the right things and had the war chest of, of resources necessary to carry us to the other side uh, safely and survive. And so with that, I want to turn it over to RJ Singh, our Chief Information and Digital Officer to go ahead and provide some context on our omni-channel approach. RJ? Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Hopefully the introduction Jeff provided gives you all a perspective of the incredible base of healthy way of life assets. And these are our people, places, programs, our talent, our content, etc., that have been perfected over the last almost 30 years. Now we wanna take that value and rapidly make it available through our digital channels and capabilities, making us truly omni-channel. At the heart of our strategy is the understanding that our consumers of today and tomorrow want to be met where they are through modalities and channels that are the most convenient to them. Whether it's in the club, in their home, on the road, or wherever fits their lifestyle. Today, their health journeys are a blend of physical and digital experiences throughout the day. You know, while, while COVID has been incredibly challenging for us and our business overall. It has given us the chance to evolve and adjust and develop our digital presence rapidly. Initially, it was to keep our members engaged with us while the clubs were closed. Then as Brian mentioned, it was to inform and educate regarding our openings, our cleaning protocols, et cetera. And then we quickly followed up with a digital membership offering and thank you, Nazi, for that introduction of that offering. It really is one of the most comprehensive offerings in the marketplace today. And uh, Keith will go into the details of this and other digital capabilities that are available today and rapidly being developed as we speak. Keith, over to you. Great. As Arjun just mentioned, we quickly realized and pivoted to remain engaged with our members by leveraging the capabilities within. There we go. Uh, within our existing mobile app. And what was originally a Band-Aid until we could reopen our clubs really became something more, a new way of engaging with our members and expanding beyond the four walls by providing our members not only with digitized club experiences, but as Jeff and RJ and Brian have mentioned, on-demand video workouts, live streaming classes, virtual personal training sessions, connected devices such as Apple Watch, Fitbit, and our own Lifetime Connect, Apple Fitness Plus included in your lifetime membership, award-winning content, at-home fitness equipment, and soon, even meal planning and meal subscription. Lifetime's making a commitment to be a digitally forward organization that not only leverages technology to create incredible digital experiences, but also to expand our brand and access to our superior services well beyond the reaches of our brick and mortar footprint. In order to do that, we must enable member touch points working seamlessly together to create immersive experiences, both physically in our clubs and digitally through these touch points that make our members feel welcomed, supported, and accomplished. We're proud to say that with over 3 million downloads and 170,000 reviews, the Lifetime Digital app is one of the top health and fitness apps with a 4.8 out of 5 star rating. Thousands of classes are being streamed every week, which have already been viewed millions of times. Thousands of in-person virtual training programs have been logged, tracked, and through our connected devices, you know, including deep integration with our Apple Fitness Watch partners, where you can track everything from workouts, steps, sleep, and a variety of biometrics to keep you on track to achieve your goals. But we've also curated and centralize our extensive award-winning library of thousands of articles and videos as a source of truth for our members, 
covering topics such as weight loss, nutrition, athletic training, immunity, sleep, and so much more. We're also digitizing the in-club experience, like being able to manage all your reservations in one convenient location. Being able to register, schedule, and pay for all your services online, including things like kids camps, personal training sessions, and tennis lessons. Or simply using your Apple Pay or to pay for your spa service or your lunch in the cafe. And in the not so distant future, we envision being fully connected, where you can check in, access your lockers, pay for your shake, all just by using your Apple or connected device in our club. Brian? Fantastic. Thanks, Keith. So as you can see, and as Nazi mentioned, RJ, um, we have a very comprehensive wellness solution. And in conversations with Nazi, we know that there's interest um, from many of you about our wellness offerings. So if you do want more information about what we have available by way of wellness, we've provided Ryan Chapman's contact information here. Uh, Ryan will also be able to follow up with each of you um, to provide any questions, uh, answers to questions that you might have as well following this webinar. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Nazi? RJ and. Oh, did you hear me or did I? <laughs> We good. Well, listen, um, Jeff, Brian, RJ, and um, Keith, thank you so much uh, for that wonderful overview. As I've told you privately, and I will say this again, uh, your messaging throughout the pandemic and um, much of the heartbreak of the last uh, year has been uh, very heartwarming, to the point, uh, concise, and something that has resonated with many of us. And I want to thank you again um, for that opportunity to know that there are companies out there who have the courage of their convictions and we'll put that conviction out there for those of us who admire you to continue to uh, follow your lead, uh, both in wellness and well-being and in your corporate culture that has exemplified the goodness uh, that you have always personified. Um, there are a few questions from the audience. I'm going to ask uh, one of our team members before I sign off and say thank you. I'm going to ask Mike Knappmiller to ask a couple of these questions uh, and give you an opportunity to interact with our audience. Mike? Thank you, Nazi. Thank you, Nazi. Um, yeah, we have a couple questions from the audience here. Um, the first one is digital workout subscription services have become very popular in the last year. How do you differentiate with brands like Peloton that have already built a large digital community? Yeah, so let, let me take attempt at that and then, sorry, Jay-Z, I know you're about to say. So, uh, you know, and, and we'll tag team and answer that question because we all have a little bit of a different perspective. First of all, I just wanna say that we love competition. Because at the end of the day, I think all our mission is, regardless of who's providing the service, we want all Americans, in fact, everybody in the world to get really engaged with their health journey. If anything at all, COVID has shown that the healthier you are, the better protection you have from diseases like COVID, et cetera. So we welcome, whether it be Peloton, whether it be anybody, is it's, it's great for us as a community. I think secondly, you know, at the end of the day, we are not trying to compete against Peloton. Uh, what we have is something unique, something that has been built over 30 years. At the end of the day, when people are engaging with the healthy way of life journey, it's not just about technology or digital, it's about the content. What we have been able to do has been something that has been curated with just incredible programs, et cetera, over the last 30 years. 
all we are seeing now is the culmination of all that, that labor, the summary of that now presented through new channels. We have some unique opportunities in the marketplace. Uh, you know, let's take live streaming, for example. Uh, Peloton, again, they are, they're doing great, but they can offer 10, 12 live streaming classes a day. For us, on an average week, we have 10,000 classes going on. And we can take the thousand of our best classes a week and have them available for live streaming. So anybody at any time can find the format that works best for them. So that's just an example, but again, just to reiterate for us, as long as people are off the couch and engaged in the health journey, competition is welcome. JC, yeah. would you like any, add, add anything to that? Thank you, RJ. And to RJ's lead in, I mean, we all know the data and statistics now. On average, people have gained 20 pounds during COVID. I mean, the, the onset of mental uh, and health depression right now is at an all-time high given the quarantine and lockdowns and the social isolation has been tremendously problematic for our society and we'll yet to see um, the data that comes out of the implications of this but to RJ's point our, our goal is to get more people healthy and active and I think with the advent of our digital roadmap it's really intended to be complementary and our digital feeds our physical destinations and so that's the advantage that we have we know that nothing can replace the social connections and the communities and the tribe-like interactions that happen within a destination like a lifetime but we also know that we need to meet people's needs anywhere anytime and the opportunity that we've stood up with digital allows us to do that now with the world's best content to rj's point Great, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. um, another another question here. Um, with the shift to companies allowing work from home, more people are moving out of large cities and downtown areas. Has this caused you to modify your strategy on where to open new gym locations today and in the future? That's a great question, Mike. Thank you. Um, and um, I would say that Lifetime has primarily been uh, focused on a suburban model um, versus an urban model. And I think we have seen probably the most dramatic impact of COVID really on the urban uh, living thus far. So uh, I would really say no, uh, we've not uh, been forced to modify. And we do believe that, you know, markets like, you know, Manhattan and so forth will uh, go through a great resurgence um, and um, we have we have not been forced to reevaluate our uh, site selection uh, process because there still remains in the in North America so many opportunities for us to uh, plant the lifetime flag in such robust uh, demographic and psychographic profiles with the right level of density that we look for um, that um, still amazing opportunities as i mentioned earlier with over 75 uh, new locations in our uh, new new product pipeline of of new sites so we've got uh, 12 to 14 new locations already planned uh, for 2022 uh, grand openings and as you might appreciate these are extremely long gestation periods of civil and site approvals and and work um, and construction projects of over a year. So they need uh, a two to three year uh, time frame of care and feeding. So uh, we're already way ahead in moving uh, and dedicating capital to, the, to those destinations. Interesting. OK, thank you. Um, another question here from the audience. Uh, if employers are subsidizing a digital membership, are you able to provide reporting for attendance? Yeah, I can jump in here. Uh, so whether that is a you know corporate relationship for club members and access or digital, we are able to provide that confirmation on attendance and participation in programming services. Okay, great. Um, 
um, we have another question here. To those who are now afraid to engage in activities, whether at your clubs or elsewhere after prolonged isolation, what's your best advice? How do we ease into normalcy? Brian, you want to take that? Yeah, I, so what I, would, uh, what I would say there is our clubs are, to date, we've had um, very few COVID-related uh, outbreaks traced back to lifetime fitness, in fact, zero. Um, our cleaning protocols are so stringent that we now even see um, our older populations and demographics utilizing our clubs almost more frequently. So what I would say is um, if, you're, if you're afraid to come in and, and engage, um, come in and ask for a tour, meet with our general managers. Uh, any of our uh, club leadership would gladly take you through uh, what, what we're doing to make sure, ensure the safety of our, our members. And if you if you still have reservations, and we understand that, and we've worked as Brian said with over two hundred thousand of our members uh, put their membership on hold during uh, the COVID pandemic, and as Brian mentioned, we didn't charge those members during that time one dime, and these were amazing brand building opportunities for our for our company, and we uh, have been careful with tremendous nurturing and care about their readiness, depending on their uh, lifestyle and their current situation. We understand that vaccines are moving and people are getting more comfortable, but if people aren't ready and uh, comfortable coming to the club, that's the reason why we've created this digital app. And you can get this information now. It's a $15 a month subscription uh, for us, and uh, you can get availability of all these live streaming and uh, 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 workouts and all this great content of our source through the Experience Life magazine that we've had for 25 years and access to these amazing professionals virtually. So it is a great option for people if they're not ready. And, and JC, I'd just like to add to that. You know, when and this kind of relates, but complementary to what JC said, once we had our digital capabilities, some of the comments that we heard from our members was something, quite honestly, I was not even expecting. And that was things like, you know, I was afraid of going into a group fitness class. I was afraid of taking yoga. I was afraid of being judged. One of the great things that the digital platform has done is in the comfort of my own home, I can get comfortable with the format. I can try things that I'm a beginner at. I can be fine by being silly. And quite honestly, along with the safety protocols of the physical location, being giving people the comfort level to again re-engage in our clubs and new things that they had never thought of doing before it's probably one of the greatest opportunity that I, I had not expected. AJ, I totally agree. My favorite thing are the dance classes. <laughs> because, talk about looking talk about foolish <laughs> and, and not caring, you know, the, uh, your whole library of dan different dances that I've had wanted to try all these years. Uh, but have been a little bit shy, believe it or not, is just a great opportunity. Well, listen, I think we're at time, and uh, I want to thank all the all of our clients, distributors, providers uh, who are attending and listening. You are an extraordinary team. You are an extraordinary company. Uh, just truly legendary and i know that what you have done in the last year will be studied over and over again uh, for lessons learned i hope to see it as part of a uh, uh, some business school case study so we can all have the takeaways i think a large part of it has to do with the fact that your heads and your hearts uh, are aligned uh, and your mission and vision and values reflect that uh, in every way, in every sense. Um, so 
I've learned a lot from you in the last year. I've learned a lot from you in the last 20 years. I'm very excited about the opportunity to offer your app as a comprehensive well-being uh, tool uh, to our members across the nation um, and to complement and supplement that with the physical clubs, which are, I believe, the 21st century version of a country club for those of us who are not into uh, the traditional country club uh, model, if you will. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, uh, Keith, for everything you've done, for everything that you have, um, the leadership you've shown in the last year. Uh, I look forward uh, to continuing to visit your clubs and using your apps. And I continue to, and, and our entire team really looks forward to continuing to serve you with devotion uh, and learning from you. Uh, this Thank has been you. a great, great webinar. Um, looking forward to the next uh, few years in your company. Thank you for attending our easy webinar on chaos and transformation. If you would like to have any uh, private time for Q&A with uh, the Lifetime Leadership and learn more about the app and how it may apply to your business and your team members, don't hesitate to reach out to Jeannie or Mike or myself. And we're happy to connect you with these wonderful guys and uh, go from there. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day and uh, be well and be safe and see you on the 29th uh, uh, at our webinar on uh, how diversity is good business hosted by Elizabeth Rom. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you again. I'm indebted to you all. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. Thank you so much. And that does conclude today's presentation. On behalf of the presenters and HealthEasy, thank you for joining.